Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a video for you guys where I will be testing out a different program. And I don't do many of these videos, but for the longest time I have been wondering about the alternatives to Photoshop. I have been very curious to try out different programs that could be comparable to Photoshop. And look, to be completely real, I think most photographers and creatives have a very love-hate relationship with Photoshop. I really wanted to test something else out today and actually see if there is a really good alternative to Photoshop out there. I have heard a lot of good rumors about certain programs and particularly Affinity Photo, which is the program that I'm gonna be trying out today. So I wanted to do a bit of a first impression impressions and actually edit a photo in the program so you guys can see maybe if there's any main differences. Um, I want to go through some of the information though with this program because I do feel that there is a lot of good stuff already and I haven't even used the program before. This is my first trial today. I want to go through some of the information on what makes it a little bit different to Photoshop or maybe what the similarities are. And I think for those of you who maybe can't afford the subscription to Photoshop and Lightroom each month, this is going to be hopefully a really good alternative for you because there are uh, good aspects to it which involve a different pricing structure which I think is really really great so I really want to go over that today with you guys and obviously show you the main differences and what it looks like inside the program so we are going to get straight into the video today and I'm going to go through a couple of the main points of affinity photo first off so I'm just on the website at the moment and you can see there's quite a few examples of work there that has been done or edited using affinity photo so I'm just going to read a couple of details off the website so if Affinity Photo has become the first choice for photography and creative professionals around the world who love its speed, power and precision. Born to work hand in hand with the latest powerful computer technology, it's the only fully loaded photo editor integrated across Mac OS, Windows and iOS. So the main features of Affinity Photo are raw editing, HDR merge, panorama stitching, focus stacking, batch processing, PSD editing, which is really great, 360 image editing, multi-layer composition and smart object support along with digital painting. So for illustrators as well, I'm assuming. So as we go down, I'm going to scroll and just pick up on any bits of information that sound important especially for photographers so here we've got flawless retouching whether you want to make quick corrections or spend time on a detailed retouch affinity photo has a complete set of retouching tools and dedicated features to help so you can smooth and retouch skin with frequency separation dodge burn clone patch and blemish removal tools that's what we need or that's what I need uh, dedicated liquify workspace for sculpting features remove unwanted objects with the magical in painting brush so that's great. That's really all I need to know as a beauty photographer specifically. Um, I would say for anyone that's interested, definitely get on the website because they do have quite a bit of information on here. And if you're interested in the details, uh, it, everything is listed here on the website. I do want to show you guys, though, the pricing structure because I think this is probably going to be a huge selling point for this program. And before I go any further, I'm just going to say that this is not sponsored by Affinity Photo, this video. I'm just really, really intrigued by the program and I really want to try it out. So I'm going to go to the buy now option and you can buy for Mac, Windows or iPad. I just want to go through a few really good points here. So the greatest thing I think with this program immediately is the fact that it is a one off payment. So as you guys know, Adobe did go to a subscription model a few years ago. So now we are having to pay per month with them. This is a one off price. So you just pay it and you own it, which is just wonderful. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would love that option. And especially for people who maybe can't claim things back on tax, they might be just starting out. And $15 a month even for Adobe and Lightroom, going over a few years, that can add up. So I think it's good to always have other options that you can consider. They are also offering at the moment 50% off their usual price for that one-off price I was just talking about. So their one-off price is around $79.99 Australian. Uh, for US, I'm not 100% sure what that'll be, but I might just put up like a current conversion rate in the video. Uh, and it's actually half price to $38.99 at the moment, which is like as a one-off price for this program. I mean, I think that's pretty great. Also, they're offering 90-day trials. So because of coronavirus at the moment and how it's been affecting a lot of creatives, a lot of freelancers out there, they are offering 90-day free trials, which is just a stellar option if you want to try it out and you really want to get used to it first and see if you like it. Uh, and then and then you can actually make the purchase later on. I think that's a few really good points about their pricing structure. I think it's completely different to a lot of what else is out there at the moment. So definitely something to consider if you are looking for something that is a little bit more affordable and something that you don't have to do an ongoing subscription with. So I am going to get straight into the program now. 
And as you can see, I've got my photo loaded into Affinity Photo. However, I have not done anything yet. I haven't looked at anything really. I have just imported my raw image into Affinity Photo. So as I said before in the information about Affinity Photo, they do handle raw file imaging, which is great. Uh, for most photographers out there, that's going to be pretty much a must. So I'm gonna go through a couple of the panels here and just what I'm seeing and what looks a little bit different to Photoshop. So as it has said about handling raw files, I can see here on the right hand side, it's looking a little bit similar to Lightroom over Photoshop. Uh, on the right hand side, the entire interface itself does look very Photoshop like. Uh, there's definitely a lot that is similar, especially with the toolbar on the left hand side. And you've got your histogram and panels just on the right hand side here. But the ones that I'm looking at, the panels that I'm looking at at the moment, are just these ones here. And this is with all the sliders, the adjustment sliders. It does tend to look a little bit more similar to Lightroom and how you would edit a raw image in there. So you've got your exposure, uh, you've got your black point, brightness, contrast, clarity, saturation, and vibrance. So they're all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you've also got a section for shadows and highlights, white balance. So I'm just gonna click on those. So yep, you've got your temperature and tint under white balance and shadows and highlights. So I'm assuming this is how you would do your first initial adjustments with your raw image in Affinity Photo. So I'm just going to do a few adjustments here. Uh, I feel like the white balance is a little bit warm on this occasion. So I'm just going to pull that back to the cooler side and then sort of maybe move the tint up to a little bit more of a pink tint there just to kind of give it a bit more coolness. Um, in terms of exposure, I actually might adjust that too. So that is just at the top here. So just maybe upping the contrast as well. Oh my God, I just realized that I was using the brightness tab. It's just how things are completely laid out in Lightroom and I wasn't even realizing that I was using the brightness tab then. So I'm just gonna go down to contrast. I'm clearly not used to this program. Um, and I'm just gonna bring that across a little bit. A little bit more clarity as well, not too much. And then I'm gonna go over to these tabs now. So I'm just looking here, we've got lens corrections, details, so you've got your luminance. Uh, tones, we do have a curves section here. So I'm assuming we can move this, oh, we can, great. So there is a section there for curves, which is wonderful because that's something that I tend to use quite a bit. I'm just gonna kind of Move that around a little bit. And I'm assuming just in this box here, you can go down to red, green, and blue. So that's great. I, I'm really happy to see that that's kind of similar to Lightroom actually in particular. And so we've got a black and white section here. Uh, and we're also, we've also got like a split toning section. So this is a little bit more similar once again to Lightroom. So I'm just gonna turn that off for now. I'm pretty happy with my initial adjustments anyway. So what we're actually gonna do is try and figure out how to get layers in here because I know that's a thing <laughs> and I do wanna test that out. And just before I go any further, we do have a navigator down here. We have a history tab, which is great. So you can go back just like Photoshop. Uh, you've got snapshots. Oh, I love snapshots. Okay, that's fantastic because I use them quite often when I'm doing a lot of my retouching in Photoshop. Snapshots are basically just taking a snapshot <laughs> of your work at one point uh, of all your layers and you can go back to that snapshot if you feel like you've gone too far with anything or you're not happy with how certain things look. Even just for a quick before and after, it's a really good idea to do that. If I click on snapshot, it is actually taking me back to the original image there. So that's really interesting to know. And then we've got the info tab here, very similar to Photoshop in quite a bit of what is actually there. So I've got to figure out though how to get the layers up and I'm just looking through to see where the layers could potentially be. I'm thinking maybe it's in overlays. What are these up here? We've got mirror view, split view. Ooh, I quite like this. This is kind of like a bit of Lightroom and Photoshop in one, which is quite interesting. So, so you can see before and after there, which is great. Oh, and side by side. That's, I actually love that function because sometimes I need that in Photoshop and not in Lightroom because most of my editing is done in Photoshop. So that's really nice to know. Maybe there is a way to do that in Photoshop and I just haven't even figured that out yet, but I do like that. 
Uh, there's sinking before and after, so that's interesting. Uh, rotate, assistant manager, and snapping. Starting to feel like I don't know where the layers are here. Okay guys, so I've literally just been sitting here for what feels like 10 years trying to find where the layers are. And I've just realized it's exactly like Lightroom. So <laughs> there is like a develop button right over here. Um, so in terms of like doing the layers, I'm assuming you have to develop the photo from raw to actually start working with layers. So I'm gonna click on this button over here now and we're gonna see what happens. And lo and behold, I can see the layers tab over there. Uh, it's just in the middle of developing. So we have, I can see here on the right hand side, we've got levels, white balance, HSL, so hue, saturation, luminance, uh, recolor, black and white, brightness, contrast. So there looks to be quite a few adjustment layers, which is great because adjustment layers are something that I work with quite often and a lot of photographers do that with their retouching. I can also see the layers tab, effects, styles and stock. So we're just going to pretty much stick to the things that I would use for editing a beauty image because I really want to get through those particular aspects and actually <laughs> test it out because I'm sure there's a lot more to this program than just that. But I honestly don't have enough hours in the day to probably go through it all. So we're going to go to the layers first off and I want to try and create something that mimics my usual dodge and burn routine. So we have our background layer. Quite easy to see everything that's kind of going on here. So what we're going to do is add an adjustment layer. Oh my gosh, they have pretty much everything and more that you would expect in Photoshop, which is really surprising. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna bring up my curves adjustment layer like I would usually do. I'm going to make this my dodge layer, so I'm gonna really brighten that up. And I'm wondering if Control and I inverts it. Oh, it does, it inverts the mask. So, you can see that's just turned black in this little box here. So now I'm gonna rename that one to Dodge. And I'm gonna create another adjustment layer. And we're gonna drag this one down. Control and I. And we're gonna rename that one to Burn. And I'm also going to just create a, another pixel layer. So I'm assuming that's a blank layer as far as I'm aware. Okay guys, so my camera just died and now it is quite dark outside. So if you're wondering why it's nice and light in video now, that's exactly why. So my camera's died, but we're just gonna continue on with this tutorial. So where were we up to? We were up to the point where I was figuring out whether a pixel layer is the exact same as just a blank transparent layer, which I think it is. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is my healing first off. So that was what I would usually do with any of my beauty photographs. I'm gonna go over to the sidebar here and just looking at the tools, a lot of them look very similar to how they appear in Photoshop. Just judging by this one saying healing brush tool, I think that's the one we need. So I'm gonna click on that. And just holding it down, you can see the other healing tools that they have. So there's the patch tool, blemish removal tool, uh, in painting brush tool and red eye removal. So I've got healing brush tool selected for now and I'm gonna zoom in and just start to remove some of the blemishes. I can see up here that the source says current layer. So I'm actually going to say current layer and below so we can actually pick up what's on the background layer. And if, okay, so this is like the uh, healing brush tool, I guess in Photoshop where you have to hold down alt to actually click somewhere else on the image and that will start to select some of the other areas of the image to go over those blemishes with. So that's cool. It's quite similar in that way. So it's basically sampling from other areas every time I click on Alt. Uh, what I'm actually going to do though is see about the other brush here, the blemish removal tool. So I'm noticing though that that does not have an option to select on the current and below. So what I might do is I'll go to the background layer and then I will duplicate that. So if you right click and click on duplicate, then we've got duplicate background layer. So I'm going to start to move over some of the blemishes with that tool. 
I must say that it does have quite a different feel to like the spot healing brush. I'm not sure if that's meant to work in the same way, but I think I did prefer using the other tool, which was uh, the healing brush tool. It might just take a bit of getting used to with that, but for now, this seems to be working pretty well for me. So I'm just going to continue sampling with the healing brush tool like we were doing before and just going over some of those bumps. And I'm going to fast forward this so you guys don't have to sit through this really long and boring process. Okay, so I'm not going to remove too much of the texture there because I do want to see what we can achieve with dodge and burn. So I'm going to go to my dodge layer now and I'm going to go over to the paintbrush tool. I'm hoping this is all the same in Affinity Photo as it is in Photoshop. And so we've got our brush selected. I'm going to put the hardness to 0%, the flow to 1%. Just type that in there. And opacity will keep it 100%. And making sure that I have, under the color tab here, we need white selected, obviously, for the mask that is inverted. So I'm going to start painting, and hopefully it's going to start dodging those areas that I need it to. And I actually think that's working, so that's good. Shows that hopefully I'm doing the right thing. We might just up the flow a little bit to, let's say, 4%. Might get us to do things a little bit quicker. Okay, so that is definitely working. That's great to know that you can achieve the same sort of effects with dodge and burn. And I must say that it does feel pretty similar to Photoshop. I wouldn't say that there's anything too different about it. Like for the most part, I've been able to navigate my way through this program so far and not have too many issues. But I mean, I feel like anything that sort of does come up as an issue you could probably get over quite quickly and and do some googling or if you're unsure about anything I'm sure there's probably an answer for it somewhere so I'm just going to continue dodging and burning like I usually would and I will fast forward as well through this bit so you guys do not have to sit through hours of me doing this Just making sure that I am switching through from dodge and burn though and making sure that I'm using both to create depth within the skin tone.
So I'm back guys and I have just finished dodging and burning. I'm just going to quickly check those layers off so you can see what I've actually done to the image. So you can see this is after my dodging and burning but this was the before. So when I switch those back on you can see how much of a difference that's made and honestly during the process I didn't notice anything too different compared to what I would usually do in Photoshop. Most of the time I even forgot I was using a different program so that's a really good sign. Uh, another thing that I did want to go through just quickly is the brushes though. One thing I did find was difficult to find with that uh, was pen pressure and, and things like that. So I do know there is a tab here that has more um, and I know that you can do your brush selection there. I didn't really see much though that sort of said about pen pressure exactly. It might be labeled something differently in this though. So I'm not 100% sure. I will have to check up on that, but it does have your shape dynamics here, which is really cool. And it's got your flow jitter and things like that as well. So really, really good to see that that's also integrated into the program. The one thing that I do want to talk about now is finding out about the stamp tool or clone stamp. So I'm assuming there is one similar over here to Photoshop. There it is, clone brush. And this is where I'll probably just use it to kind of alter the makeup a little bit just to clean up that line slightly. And I'm going to hold down Alt and select and hopefully Actually, don't know if anything's happening. Oh, that's because I've got current layer selected. So we need current layer and below. And let's try that again. Great. So that works just like it would in Photoshop, which is fabulous. And I'm just going to clean up that line a bit. I actually think... This feels a little bit better to work with than the clone stamp in Photoshop. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with that tool. Um, and sometimes it can be my computer that is quite laggy with it. But I actually feel like this is really smooth and is quite precise. So I'm actually really impressed with that overall. So yeah, I'm just going to leave that like that. Um, I'm not going to do anything too much with the makeup and the skin retouching, obviously, because this is really just a trial of this program. I just want to see what the potential is with it. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, now we're going to move on to maybe a bit of a color grade. So I'm going to test out over here in the adjustment tab, the black and white layer, because I want to see whether I can achieve what I would usually achieve in Photoshop with it. So clicking on that. Uh, we also have blending modes. I did notice while I was doing dodge and burn, so that's great. Uh, usually I would set my black and white layer to luminosity, which is there. And I'm going to move the yellows and the reds. Oh my god, it does work, just like Photoshop. So that's great. Pretty impressed there. So I'm going to move that just so we've got like enough texture and depth to the skin tone. And so I'm going to turn that on and off. You guys can see what that's kind of doing. I'm going to move that up above Dodge and Burn, actually, because we want that at the top. And then I'm going to move that down a bit. So turning that on and off, you can see that's adding a bit more depth. Right, so that looks pretty good to me. So it just adds a bit more texture and depth to the skin tone overall. Okay, so that's really good because that's one of my most favorite layers in Photoshop to use. So I'm really, really impressed with that. Uh, I'm also going to bring up a levels. Now I'm not sure about luminosity masks. This could be really interesting. Um, Okay, so I'm not going to create a luminosity mask because I'm not sure how to do it in this program yet. I don't think it's the same way that Photoshop usually does um, those sorts of layers. So I'm going to get up the levels that I just created and I'm going to start to um, just give it a bit more contrast. Oh, 
great. I'm going to bring up another adjustment layer this time. And we're going to bring up another black and white layer. And we are going to adjust the opacity on this one down to like maybe 9%. And then going back to the adjustments again, I want to see if there's like a selective color there. Because that's also another favorite of mine and it is very happy with that. <laughs> And you can actually create presets too, I've noticed. Uh, so that'll be interesting to give that a go. So this selective color, we are looking at maybe going to the neutrals because I feel like that's gonna give us the most to work with here. So I'm gonna kind of up the pinks. And then we are going to go to the blacks and I'm going to just kind of play around with some of the selective color features here because this is usually how I would do my color grades in Photoshop. There's usually nothing too spectacular to it. And then maybe the whites as well. Okay, and maybe just to add a curves layer as well on top. And I'm just going to give that a little bit more contrast there. I'm actually pretty happy with how this image has turned out overall. I think uh, with the minimal kind of adjustments that I've done apart from dodge and burn and my usual kind of work process, it's gone along really well in this program. I have to say, considering this program currently is sitting at about $38 Australian, I think it's pretty unbelievable. Uh, and it is a one-off purchase for those of you out there who cannot afford Photoshop, who cannot afford the Adobe suite or anything like that, please check this out because it could be the program for you. Uh, I'm really, really impressed so far with how I've, everything's gone in this program. And I'm just, I just can't believe that it's so cheap, to be honest. Um, I really want to give you guys a before and after though, because I think I'm pretty much finished with how the image is kind of looking at the moment. Um, I would obviously spend a lot longer on these images, but this is just kind of a trial of the program. Okay, so this is the before image. And this is the after image. So I hope you guys have really enjoyed this little insight into Affinity Photo. And I really hope you guys will go and give it a trial because there is 90 day trials at the moment. So I really, really recommend for any of you who are interested in switching from Photoshop or for looking for an alternative, give it a go and see what you think. And let me know what you think uh, because there's a lot of different creatives out there who might tend to find that this is more geared towards certain types of creative work and and for me as a photographer we're using this program it's going to be very different to a lot of other people i personally think for retouching this is a really good start and i think i just need to learn how to use the program a little bit more get a little bit more familiar with it and actually see where that could take me and my work so I really recommend it for anyone who's looking at trying something different. If you'd like to see more tutorials or videos like this on my channel, please let me know in the comments section below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.